Hello and welcome to this Texas Instruments training video. This video will introduce high-speed layout guidelines for reducing EMI in LVDS Surtees designs. Electromagnetic interference is a prevalent issue in high-speed designs. Although the use of LVDS Surtees helps to reduce radiated emissions, they do not completely eliminate them. EMI prevention must be considered early in the design process and the PCB must be compliant with PCB guidelines for high-speed signals. If there is a TI-EVM available for the CERTES part, you can also reference the schematic and layout for additional guidelines. Here are some initial considerations to take into account at the beginning of the design. First, you will want to create a diagram with the functional groups of the system. This includes the serializer, the deserializer, the power, and other functional groups. Next, you should identify the sensitive signals that need to be routed. This includes clock signals and impedance controlled signals. Lastly, you should clarify frequency and trace length and cable length requirements. Are you able to use a lower clock frequency and shorter distance trace lengths and cable lengths? If so, you should go ahead and do so. After you have made these initial considerations, you will then need to review these PCB stackup and board layout guidelines. At minimum, select a PCB with at least four layers, one for power, one for ground, and two for signals. Use dedicated grounded power planes and ensure they're equivalent in size and shape. Avoid cutting up the planes if possible. For the signals, you'll want to keep traces as short as possible and keep single-ended signals away from differential signals by at least two times the trace width. Lastly, ensure that ESD susceptible circuitry is placed at the center of the PCB. Next, for the location of the serializer and deserializer, you will need to place these as close to the connectors as possible. For the ground and power, as mentioned previously, you will want to use solid power and ground planes. Cutting up the planes can result in current loops and should be avoided. If you must route over a split plane, then ensure to use a one microfarad stitching capacitor. Additionally, you should separate the digital and analog power supplies with filtering and bypassing and use multiple vias for both power and ground connections. Lastly, you should use ferrite beads to decouple the IC power from the rest of the power supply system. Another design parameter you should take into account is the supply noise. Ideally, the supply noise should be, low, should be below 20 millivolts peak to peak. To achieve this, bypass capacitors are critical. Place the largest value filter capacitors near power connectors and supply inputs, and place high quality X7R decoupling capacitors as close as possible to device pins. Use multiple capacitors in parallel and connect the pad of the capacitor directly to a via to the ground plane with two or three vias. Additionally, keep traces from decoupling caps to ground as short and wide as possible and ensure that decoupling capacitors are on the same layer as the device. Do not place vias between decoupling caps and the IC. Even if space becomes an issue, do not neglect PLL bypassing as it is the most critical of low, no low noise operation. Lastly, 0805 or 1206 chip capacitors are recommended as they offer the lowest inductance and can be mounted very close to the device pins. Now, let's talk about the differential traces. First, the LVDS traces should be 100 ohm differential impedance of micro strip or differential strip line. Strip lines require an additional layer, which may increase costs, but they usually have better EMI and EMC performance. Second, the spacing between LVDS signal pairs and other signals should be a minimum of twice the width of the trace. 5x would be best, but 2x will suffice. Third, the spacing between the individual conductors of an LVDS pair should be less than twice the width of the trace to ensure the conductors are tightly coupled. Additionally, trace lengths should be matched within 5 millimeters of each other to reduce inter-pair and intra-pair skew, and you should ensure to route the LVDS pair symmetrically and parallel to each other. Also, avoid right angle traces as they are known to cause radiation. Route traces with 45 degree angles and rounded corners. 
Additionally, stubs should be kept as short as possible as they contribute a lot to signal integrity issues. Termination resistors should also be placed as close as possible to the deserializer input pins and traces should be routed with the most direct and minimum trace length to the connectors. You should also ensure that the trace impedance matches the differential impedance of the selected physical media. Lastly, do not route traces near or under the edge of the PCB, crystals, oscillators, clock signal generators, switching power regulators, mounting holes, magnetic devices, or ICs that use or duplicate clock signals. Do not place probe or test points on any LVDS traces and ensure that any discontinuities that occur on one signal line of an LVDS pair also occurs on the other signal line of the pair. The proper choice of connectors and cables also has an impact on the amount of EMI radiated. Make sure to use shielded high-speed connectors that have complete shielding around the connector interface. Also, make sure to keep the impedance of the LVDS traces matched across transitions such as the connectors. When using a ribbon cable, place a ground line between each LVDS pair. For cables, twin coax cables have been shown to have the best performance due to their construction and double shielding, which allows very, very low cable skew and EMI. When twin coax cables are used, ensure to shield each cable pair. This will allow for faster speeds, longer distances, and reduced EMI. If you are still having issues with EMI in your system after following these guidelines, you can apply the steps in this table to help identify the source of the EMI and take steps to reduce it. First, you can turn off the data source, serializer, and deserializer, and keep other components on to capture ambient noise. Second, you can turn everything but the serializer off to capture the serializer noise. Third, you can turn everything but the deserializer off to capture the deserializer noise. And fourth, you can turn off everything but the data source, serializer, and deserializer to observe the noise of the CERTES. Lastly, some relatively simple options for reducing EMI include slowing down the clock rise and fall time by adding capacitance at the clock pin, shielding the serializer board, and connecting the shield to a solid ground, and changing to a better shielded cable. In conclusion, follow the guidelines listed in this video to ensure your LVDS series design is EMI compliant. If you encounter any issues with EMI, identify the root cause with the table in the previous slide and take the appropriate measures. Reference TI's EBM schematic and layout for the series you are using and make sure to reference this application note for more detailed guidelines for reducing EMI. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.